On Sunday morning, July 20th, 2003, some 900 people from all over America and a handful of other countries gathered at a high school in Colorado Springs, Colorado. They came for one reason. Together, for the next seven days, they would propel themselves 398 miles across the Continental Divide twice and climb one of Colorado's highest peaks. They would do it as a group, but accomplish their journey individually, each under his or her own power, on bicycles. Long rides like this, not as much as I used to. <laughs> I used to ride a lot. Um, How'd you pick this one? Um, I just wanted to do Colorado. I think it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, we got a beautiful sunrise, got some climbing right off the bat, but it shouldn't be too bad. This one should be pretty hard. <laughs> um, Mount Evans should be hard. As the light of dawn broke on nearby Pikes Peak, the camp stirred to life. I'm a little anxious about going up all the mountains, but we'll go slow and take our time and stop at the rest stops and have fun, and we're not in a race, so it'll be good. At breakfast, apprehension and a degree of anxiety prevail. Well, actually, all I've really ridden in is Wisconsin, and we have a lot of rolling hills, but no mountains. So, And there's a lot of pretty countryside in Wisconsin, but not the heights. And, uh, and the hills going down the sides of the mountains are a bit, <laughs> a bit more exciting than the ones in Wisconsin. <laughs> well, we have an oxygen tank. We'll be all right. Two men from Jamaica, experienced riders in their country, had never biked at high altitude. You know, we've been in mountains before, but um, I think this will be the highest that we ever um, trying to climb right now. One, Should be a good day of riding this morning. We're going. The weather's going to hold out for us. Just be aware of showers in the afternoon. Um, thanks for showing up and have a great ride. Ready? As the sun rose over Colorado Springs, the 2003 Bicycle Tour of Colorado began. In just a few miles, they passed a Colorado icon, the Garden of the Gods. It is one of Colorado's most famous tourist attractions. Slabs of rock upended by eons of geological pressure, the stony remains of an ancient seafloor. I think it's, it's beautiful. No, it's, so much, it's so much bigger than you, it's bigger than life. You know, you just feel very small, you kind of get a better perspective of, you know, how insignificant we really are. Every time we come out here, we're just amazed by the beauty. I mean, it's, you know, you really begin to feel kind of minimal next to it. Well, so far, it's the best thing we've seen, you know, in the half an hour we've been on the road, so it's right up there. <laughs> Ask me later in the week, something might surpass it. <laughs> the route this day would be 83 miles long. It would take them up from Colorado Springs, northwest, into the mountains. By the middle of the morning, for most riders, Pike's Peak was at their back, and they looked forward to the first rest stop. Tour director Kent Powell explains how he picks the route each year. We look for climbing, number one, uh, lots of good passes and scenery number two, which you get that with the passes usually. Colorado's the ultimate cycling destination. Um, the challenge is the high altitude and the climbs. We have very long climbs out here. Six, eight miles on the passes and sometimes we get 20 miles of climbing. Riders signed up for the tour for a variety of reasons. One woman did it because it was her 50th birthday. I turned 50. <laughs> oh, my kids are grown up and just needed something else. I've always been a mother and this is my thing. I have left a cycle. Then the tour passed through an area the likes of which most people had never seen before. A fire zone. Just a year earlier, this was the site of the worst fire in Colorado history, the so-called Heyman Fire. The Heyman Fire lasted for two weeks, traveling 45 miles through the foothills west of Denver, destroying 600 homes. It's actually growing back real nice. I, I was expecting a lot worse. Um, it's bad. I mean, obviously, all the trees are dead, and um, but it's kind of the way of life out here. You got the flowers growing, you got the grass growing again, so it's actually kind of nice. Well, I think it's going to take 
Uh, most likely, I would say, fully to recover fully, I think it's going to take 50 to 100 years. They made fast descent into the South Platte River Valley. But then, the first long, steep uphill of the tour. I'm struggling with uh, the altitude. I live in Ohio. <laughs> A friend of mine invited me to join her. I said I would. <laughs> And what do you think of your friend now? <laughs> I'm wondering how good a friend she is. <laughs> it was early afternoon. The heat and the hill took their toll. It was in the 90s on the pavement. A 7 to 8 percent grade. How far to the top? I'm not too sure. It's the most fun you can have with your clothes on, though. <laughs> well, I'm from Kansas, so this is tough. <laughs> well, how are you doing? Okay. It was my legs were starting to hurt, so but I yeah, I'm not used to these hills, mountains. Where are you from? Uh, Dallas, Texas. How do you train for this in Dallas, Texas? Uh, you no, you don't. <laughs> so far, so good. It's so far, so good. By now, most have been riding about eight hours, with a good four hours ahead of them before their overnight stop in Evergreen, Colorado. After a steep uphill, a fast downhill. It's scary. <laughs> it's scary, but um, I don't know. It's just kind of fun. It's kind of fun just to let it roll. At the end of the long downhill, a place to relax by the South Platte River. It's quite long and grueling, but I mean, it was beautiful. You just sort of keep plodding along, and and it's just stunning. It's stunning sun countryside so you just sort of try and focus on that and not focus on the climb but it's really nice and the downhill was incredible I mean, it was I don't know how fast I was going but probably 50 miles an hour almost probably 40 to 50 miles an hour then a change in pace back on the route a gravel road down the South Platte Canyon Valley for about four miles by now the bulk of the bicycle tourists were pedaling the last few miles of their first day's route but as they meandered along the banks of the South Platte, they still had another 20 miles to go. At the end of the day, an unexpected motivation. Well, they've had a lot of, uh, we've had a lot of thank yous, a lot of waves, a lot of smiles, a lot of thumbs up. What do you think it'd be like to ride that far? Uh, hard. hot, because it's warm outside right now. Yeah, it's really warm, so. Okay, hold our signs up. So maybe someday our boys will be able to do a ride like this. Six more miles! I thought they were great. They scared me they were screaming so loud. <laughs> Just the boost I needed to get up the hill. That's exactly right. <laughs> that did it for us. Yeah, those guys were pumped up. This is a good town. You got to pump it up, pump it up. Evergreen, Colorado, cheerleaders for the high school cheered the spirits of exhausted bicyclists. The end of the first day of the tour. Yeah, we're today. finished for today. Get ready for tomorrow. We're all, I'm already afraid. <laughs> but this is my fourth year in a row, so there must be something good, right? <laughs> it's awesome. Pump it up, pump it up, pump. Pump it up, pump it up, pump it up, go ahead, go ahead. Pump it up, go ahead, go ahead. Pump it up, go ahead. At Echo Lake, on the early morning of Monday, July 21st, the still waters echoed with sounds of nature.
It was day two of the bicycle tour of Colorado, and it would prove to be a challenging, spectacular, and for some, a very memorable day. They started their day with a long but scenic uphill climb from their overnight stop in Evergreen. But there was more. Those who wanted could climb 14,000 feet to the top of one of Colorado's highest mountains, Mount Evans. It was an optional side trip, and most decided to test their muscles against the mountain. The Mount Evans Highway was built decades ago as a tourist attraction. It is America's highest paved road, but it is not for the faint of heart. It is one of just a few places in America where bicyclists can ride a paved road through alpine tundra. A father and son team decided to take the challenge and climb Mount Evans. I like biking and I've done it in the past and I just think it's fun. It was hard. Why was it hard? I don't know, because there's such a high altitude it's like harder to breathe. And it's a really steep grade. You only weigh 100 pounds, Ben. <laughs> yeah. You got it easy. Yeah. Um, this is my fifth tour. I did two on tandems and this is my third one on my own bike. I'm 13. But we've always done a lot of biking, you know, when our kids were... <laughs> Um, young, we had a tandem, we did these trips, you know, the bicycle tour. Boy, he wanted to come. Yeah, he likes biking. I mean, it's not, you can't force kids to, to uh, you know, if they're not into it. You know, it's not a, it's not like you can get out there. Okay, okay. Son, we're, we're riding out Mount Evans today. It's got to be their idea. 14,200 feet, something. The riders pace themselves to adjust to the extreme altitude. The two men from Jamaica took their time making the climb. Oh, it's going pretty good, pretty good. No complaints, yeah, it's pretty slow and steady my first time at this height. So I'm just taking it easy, taking it easy. Yeah, man, it's been really slow and trying to breathe, you know, it's, it's really tough. It's very thin up here. It's not, it's not like home, you know. They came from sea level. A couple of days later, they were riding above Timberline and seeing snow in July for the first time. Hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Sprinkle some like. Oh! There you go. The Mount Evans climb was special for many, like the woman celebrating her 50th birthday on the mountain. On top of Mount Evans. Woohoo! Whoa, that was a. Not sure I'm gonna get down. <laughs> I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> but it was a wonderful ride. For another two riders, the Mount Evans climb would become especially memorable. They would ride together to the top as boyfriend and girlfriend. They would ride down, engaged to be married. At the summit on bended knee, a high altitude proposal. The next day, they told their story. They encouraged me to go up to the top from Summit Lake because our friend said, well, he has a surprise for you at the top. He's going to give you a surprise. <laughs> so I didn't really know what that was. Right. So then she came out of the restroom, and <laughs> I just said, will you marry me? And she was really surprised. And then they, we got up on a rock, and I got down on my knee, and uh, that was it. So Why Mount Evans? Um... This is my third time doing BTC. It's a great tour. And I just thought, wow, wouldn't that be cool to do it on the highest paved road in the whole country? So it'll be something we'll always remember. We can maybe ride it again sometime. And you said yes? I said yes. And I gave her till the end of the tour to decide. <laughs> so hopefully I'm still saying yes. So hopefully she'll do the next two days. And if she doesn't, I'm sure there's other cyclists. Uh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> I wouldn't find anybody else, my like sweetie. <laughs> That night's overnight stay was Idaho Springs, Colorado, an old mining town, where many riders struck gold in an ice cream store. 
normally after a hard drive like this, you know you can indulge in any kind of food you want. You know you're not going to gain weight. Ice cream. What is that? It sits in your stomach and it's sweet and fattening. At the end of the day, having burned so many calories, few riders worry about counting calories. I don't have any guilt. <laughs> I have, have to watch my girlish figures, so I would hope I don't ex exceed like 2,500. So you don't count the consumption? You just no, I just eat. <laughs> well, we just had a large pizza. We had um, garlic bread and cheese. Potato skins. We had potato skins. We Beer. Had uh, uh, ice cream, fudge, and 100,000 calories in it. <laughs> and beer. At the beer garden, a couple from Kansas City proved they still had energy to spare, despite 148 miles in two days, despite a 14,000-foot mountain climb. They danced. Mike gives us the energy to do that. <laughs> I'm a fitness instructor, so I have all kinds of energy. <laughs> this is the first? This is the first today. Yeah, first time we danced in our marriage. <laughs> no, we, we dance pretty often. Day two of the Bicycle Tour of Colorado. A mountaintop marriage proposal, guilt-free ice cream, seeing snow in July, and dancing. <laughs> On the morning of July 22nd, the third day of the Bicycle Tour of Colorado, riders traced a historic route from Idaho Springs. They followed what was once a railroad alongside Clear Creek. It is now an outer road for Interstate 70. The bicyclists passed reminders of this area's history, remnants of the gold rush. Miners first found precious metal here in Colorado in 1859, and the gold rush here began. Discoveries in the Idaho Springs area led to findings elsewhere, and in a couple of decades, mining towns like Telluride, Breckenridge, and Aspen came into being. As they climbed through the mountains, they would go through several old mining towns. It is one of the best known historic icons of Colorado's rich mining history. The Georgetown Loop Railroad. I guess I think of all the great rail trails that I've ridden on my bike with a genuine w uh, wooden uh, train whistle of my own, <laughs> which I go, whoo, whoo. So I associated that. <laughs> Near Georgetown, Colorado, a few riders had the unusual experience of riding alongside a steam locomotive passenger train. Oh, I like uh, steam trains. Uh, I like riding and seeing the terrain, but uh, I really like stopping. If, if this had really been my tour, I'd be on that train. <laughs> well, a lot of people have been doing steam whistle blows right before they passed me, so that's what I think of. Here comes another one. <laughs> a little more training, a little more climbing, and a few, uh, lot fewer brownies, and I think I would be going a bit faster. I'm just trying to get from one place to another. It's been a long two days. There's only about 43 miles today. So this is an easy day. <laughs> the bicycle tourists said they were getting acclimated to the altitude, so Loveland Pass looming ahead did not seem as daunting. It's no big deal. <laughs> no? No. <laughs> Today should be a lot easier. It's a challenge. You just got to meet the challenge. We'll suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> bingo, bingo. What choice you have? <laughs> From Georgetown, the riders climbed ever higher toward 11,000 foot Loveland Pass. 
U.S. Highway 6 across Loveland Pass is among Colorado's most treacherous in the wintertime. The pass is frequently closed by avalanche. But in July, Highway 6 is a spectacular climb to the Continental Divide. On long climbs like this, riders' thoughts go many directions, daydreaming, concentrating on issues large and small back home, or just focusing on getting to the top. I'm concentrating on what's on the road, whether or not there are any potholes, you know, watching the traffic behind me, and um, concentrating on breathing, especially up here since I'm from Texas and we don't have this problem with altitude. <laughs> my mind will wander, things at home, elsewhere, but I'm keeping my mind on the road and just cranking along. Nothing. 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 How great it would be to get off this bike. <laughs> I just kind of try to take, take in the scenery and, and uh, try to concentrate on how much pain I'm in. I think of really good looking guys, right? <laughs> really sexy looking guys. A little bit of sweat is nice too, you know? And you just kind of think about them and you just keep pedaling and talking and pedaling and talking. And it's so fun because you're going to the top of the Continental Divide, which is top of the world. It's easy. It's all a, a mental thing. It's not a physical thing at all. It, it, it makes it worth it when you when you when you sit up when you get to the top and you just look around. Just uh, focus on getting up to that next switchback. Just one little section at a time. My dad like, here. What's it like to drive it? It's a blast. I think it's such an honor that my kids will actually come out here and do this with me. I think it's pretty cool that they'll still go with their dad and go somewhere. By the middle of the day, most riders had achieved the summit. Loveland Pass straddles the Continental Divide, the highest ridge across the American West. What are the weather conditions like up here in Loveland Pass? Uh, like very windy. <laughs> not cold. too cold, not too cold. Could be colder. Just a little further. Very nice. How are you liking the That's tour nice. so far? Right now at the top, I love it. <laughs> not ready to pass out a couple times, but I, mean, I made it pretty good. It's probably about the highest I've ever been. And uh, it's great, above the tree line. My friends uh, got me to do it, they're from Texas. And uh, we had done some rides before, but they were looking for something a little bit more challenging. So we did it, and they're challenged as well. <laughs> I didn't think they would be, but it's a very difficult ride, but it's, it's fun. In a couple of days, the tour would again cross the Continental Divide. For now, they savored the long downhill to Frisco, Colorado their home for the next two nights on the bicycle tour of Colorado. The town of Frisco threw a party on Main Street for the bicycle tour of Colorado. The riders had a day off to rest, shop, or enjoy a raft trip or hike. It was the halfway point. It's great. I mean, everybody's so friendly. They're giving stuff away free. You gotta like that. And everybody's, and the music's great, outdoors. People are really friendly, as we've seen. People have been really warm and receptive to us. Oh my gosh. Tremendous time. I mean, oh. think about it in terms of, okay, going out on vacation, experiencing the most painful time you can have in your life and enjoying it. Whatever comes what may, they will ride to the bitter end. And we've seen it in the last three days. Now this is a life experience. You know, we have the opportunity to go out and do something of this nature and experience it and go back, relive it in your mind. And it sticks with you for the rest of your life. You know, there's so many other folks out in this world who don't take advantage of the opportunity. And what we came together as a group, as a team, and we took on the challenge, and that's why we're here. After a day off in Frisco, Colorado, the 2003 Bicycle Tour of Colorado passed through Breckenridge on their way across 11,500 foot Hoosier Pass and then on to Salida, Colorado, an 86 mile trip. The ride's going really good. You never know, the easiest states are sometimes the hardest, so uh, it's been fun. 
consistent, good coffee. And that's what we're used to, the monkey. You gotta keep that monkey on your back. <laughs> It'll help me get me over, over the next pass. Starbucks. Why Starbucks? I have stock in the company. <laughs> <laughs> Breckenridge is known to many as a ski town, but in summer, the old mining town shimmers with art, bicycling, and music festivals. It's a popular place for mountain bike and road racers, hosting many events and races. It wasn't a scheduled stop, but many of the riders stopped to pose in front of the unusual artwork to have a photo taken. We're in the lowest gear. Probably get into one higher. That way. Pretty steep hill here. Yep. Yeah. Three miles to the top from here, right? What's the rest of the day going to be like for you guys? They're mostly downhill. That'd be nice. Go for a ten. We're concentrating on yeah. getting there. Hard starting again. Slow and steady. Slow and steady. Really low gear. Granny gear. Granny. We're slower than the others, but eventually we get there. I think. Not as bad as some of the others. We make it up. How fast do you think you're going here? About two. Two? <laughs> Maybe one and a half. One and a half. What is that? Tell me why. For the folks back home, why are you going so slow? Um, well, I'm not used to the uh, elevation. Yeah, yeah, that's the reason. It has nothing to do with fitness. It's the elevation. I'm from Tucson, so nice climb, though. Yeah. Having fun, enjoying the weather. This is the longest day of the ride. Yeah, it is. How are you psyching yourself for that? Um. I just enjoy it. I mean, it, it, you don't really have to psych yourself. You're on vacation. Got all day. Okay. How's it for you today? I'm trying to think about beers and boys, but it's really <laughs> tough. It's really tough. They joke in Colorado there are but two seasons, winter and the construction season. Halfway up Hoosier Pass, a 10-minute wait. I wouldn't have stopped here except the road guys made a stop. Otherwise, I'd have been hammering all the way, you know. Paving the road. Paving the road so it's better for us to ride on. <laughs> <laughs> Doing it all just for you guys. Huh? Oh, yeah. I guess so. Definitely. So far, it's been uh, not a problem. We've been keeping up a pretty decent pace. Just because they let us stop, it's all right. I'm going to hydrate a little bit. Coming up, coming up. New road just for us. Seems well going up the hill. <laughs> this is Hoosier Pass. Elevation 11,542 feet, give or take. From the top of Hoosier Pass, the Bicycle Tour of Colorado took a long, gentle ride through an area called South Park, considered by many to be one of the loveliest regions of the state. It's wide open country dotted by many of Colorado's original ranches. Far from the mining towns and ski resorts, it's land that's little changed over the decades. For miles and miles, the riders had the wind to their back. After coming down from Hoosier Pass at more than 11,500 feet, it was mostly downhill to Salida at about 7,000 feet. The riders could see by their tour map booklets that the most challenging days of the ride were now behind them. The next three days would be filled with long scenic highways and just a few short hills to climb. By this time, the routine of vacation by bicycle was well established. Many volunteers spend their own vacation time manning the aid stations and working to support the riders. I've lived in Colorado my entire life, and I've never spent eight hours on top of Loveland Pass, or here for that matter. You miss a lot of it, you know, you drive by doing your work, whatever, and this way you have to stop and look. It's the best reason I can think of. It just gets me out to places I've never, you know, I drive by normally. And people are nice and say thank you, and... And they're always hungry. And they're always hungry. <laughs> How much do you pay for doing this? Nothing. Zero. We're just volunteers, something more. Are you taking a week of your time to do this? Yes, yeah. definitely. Why? Because it's fun. And we love to do it. And we love people. <laughs> They're doing something that's cool. On the Arkansas River in Salida, Colorado, a time to cool off. 
And in the late afternoon shade of the huge cottonwood trees in Salida's Town Park, a few took a chance to catch a few Z's. Others relaxed by catching up with Lance Armstrong's attempt to win a fifth Tour de France. Many riders in the Tour come in groups. Others come as families. One of the youngest riders was with this family. How many miles did you ride today? Seventy. How old are you? Five and three quarters. Why did you want to do this? I didn't want to do this. My parents just had the idea to make us go. Is it a good idea or a bad idea? It was great with me. How fast have you gone going down a big hill? Today I've gone even faster than I've ever gone How on fast? a bike. I don't know. But at least way over 50, my dad 50? said. 50? Was that fun or was that scary or how would you describe that? Scary. Well, my dad almost made us go off the edge. The next day, riders young and old would follow alongside and ride hundreds of feet above the Arkansas River as the Bicycle Tour of Colorado visited the Royal Gorge. Day six would consist of a long downhill and a very high bridge. As the riders left Salida en route to Canyon City, their last overnight stop on the tour, they reflected on their experience. The night before in camp, one rider addressed a question her friends often asked before she went on the tour. I've had this conversation with a lot of people and the difference between doing something like this and just going to sit at a resort is that after a couple of days of doing this, you just feel like you're away from everything, that the rest of the world doesn't matter. Throughout their week in Colorado, the riders compared the terrain in the state with what they were accustomed to back home. I mean, it's, it's pretty, pretty awesome. It's a lot different. Florida is just flat. I ride my bike there and you never have to stand up. You never have to shift a gear. It's just flat road. Um, when you go over a bridge, it's a big thing. They would soon cross a very high bridge, but first they had to get up a steep hill. Walk the rest of the way. <laughs> All the way to Colorado Springs? Uh, just to the crest of this hill. Oh God, it's worth it. <laughs> it's what? It's worth it. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, I'm taking it a step at a time. Step at a time. Did you know this is going to be this steep? No, I didn't. And it's pretty steep for a flatlander. <laughs> Their destination was Royal Gorge Bridge, but they came in a back way on a seldom used road. It's a big hill, but we had the worst of it behind us, ready to go over the bridge, see what it lo looks like to go down a uh, really steep drop. <laughs> Are we having fun yet? <sighs> this is the last hill! At the top of the hill, a man cheered on others while he waited for his wife. Sprint it up here! It's tough. It is tough. <laughs> Come on, guys! You can make it! And I remember the first time I did it, we had somebody up here doing this, and it was just, it was amazing. If you get down to that hill right there, and it's, <laughs> you need it. All you can get. Nice job! Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Nice job, Ooh. honey. Oh. <laughs> Keep coming, guys! the Royal Gorge Bridge, over a thousand feet above the Arkansas River and a railroad. It is said to be the highest bridge in the world. The Bicycle Tour of Colorado crossed the bridge. It's pretty far down there. Yeah, yeah that's quite a ways. I am just sweating like a pig because I am just so scared. What would happen if you were to look over the edge? Uh, I'll look over on the, I'll look over when I get to the other side. I love that feeling of looking over the edge. Do you really? I'll get you right over there. 
Beautiful. Crossing more than a thousand feet above the Arkansas River Valley, the Royal Gorge Bridge can be a daunting task for some people to cross without a little help. <laughs> She's a little bit nervous going across <laughs> the bridge. She doesn't like heights, so I'm helping her. Aww. Aren't they nice? That is sweet. I think this is beautiful. Though. This is the second time I've been up here, and I love it. Yeah. This has been a great ride. I'm almost to the end. <laughs> like this. All right, Thank I'm you. Get my bike. <laughs> I'll see you when you get back. <laughs> you made it. I made it. Well, I knew I would make it. I just don't like it. <laughs> I've been across it before. And I didn't like it much then either. <laughs> the Royal Gorge Bridge behind them. The Bicycle Tour of Colorado would travel on to Canyon City to spend the night. Yeah, so good. Canyon City was the last night on the bike tour. I hope you've all enjoyed our ride this week. I've had a great time. We've had some crazy things go on this week. The tour was winding down. The last day would be the shortest, and thoughts would turn to home and individual accomplishments on the bicycle tour of Colorado. The final day of the 2003 Bicycle Tour of Colorado dawned windy and fair, but the wind would be at the bicycle riders' backs to speed them along. They broke camp and made ready for their last ride. It was a day of reflection and contemplation on their accomplishments. I think when you get a chance to work hard and dig down deep, you, you dig, dig down deep into who you are. and. I know I'm being very philosophical, but sometimes that's why we're here, to really have this opportunity to dig down deep and say, okay, I can go over that next hill, I can get over that next crest. Um, it is hard work, and it's really amazing what the human body can do, and how strong we can be, and how we can get over that next hill, whatever it is. <laughs> it's the challenge, I like to meet the challenge, and at the end of the day, after you finish your ride, it's not really, it's not the pain you remember, it's the fact that you met the challenge that you remember, and it makes you feel good, you know, it's, uh, it, it's good for the soul. <laughs> I think it's because most people here are, have an athletic past and, and they remember the fun they had when they pushed themselves hard, when they were working out. And it brings the inner child that you have, everybody has, of playing, playing hard, getting dirty, um, pushing themselves up that little hill on their tricycle when they were a child. I think the, uh, the people, the organization, and um, what it takes to put something like this on, and uh, um, just all of the people from all over the country, all over the world, and uh, I think that's um, the, the trip itself, the, the, the tour, the, the course. Prove that I can still do it. And? And I did it. <laughs> Amazingly so. It's, uh, it was a challenge, but it, uh, I got stronger every day. Look at the sunshine that we have in Colorado. Look at how beautiful it is in Colorado. And think about how it all came to be. Whether you're, what your faith is, what you believe in, to know that all this beauty is here for us to enjoy. And what better way to enjoy it than on a ride like this.